Good morning, Siti Kenu. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for um, joining class today. Uh, we'll begin. Uh, so can I ask uh, uh, Siti Kenu to lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day as you have given us, O oh Lord. Lord, as we are going to spend this hour, this day, learning about from your word, Lord, whatever we are going to learn about you, your kingdom, Lord, whatever we, Pastor Ma'am, is going to teach us, Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for kingdom expansion. And Lord, your manifestation should happen in your in our lives, O oh Lord. We give you, we surrender you our lives, O oh Lord. Do as ever it pleases to you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we ask everything and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Siddhi Kenu. Thank you, everyone, for the wishes. Thank you, Jeffina and Anita. Thank you also for, thank you to Paul as well. Okay, so we'll, uh, we were looking at the last uh, chapter um, in uh, the, the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom mandate. Okay, so what is the kingdom mandate? What is the kingdom mandate? Uh, the kingdom mandate is a uh, like living on earth like uh, as it is in heaven. Okay, with a childlike attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeffina. The kingdom mandate. There is a kingdom mandate on our lives, and it. What is it? It is to see His kingdom come and His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so that is the kingdom mandate that God has uh, given to us. So what is the kingdom mandate? The kingdom mandate uh, is um, uh, on our lives is to see God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so it's our responsibility to see um, God's kingdom come. It's our uh, responsibility. It's our God-given responsibility and privilege uh, to see His will be established in our lives wherever we are. And so we are, you know, supposed to pray that His kingdom come, His will be done in every area of our life. So whatever situation or uh, you know, wherever we step into, whichever place we step into, uh, the king and his kingdom also steps into that place or to that situation. Why? Because we carry the kingdom of God. Okay? The kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is uh, not a, a, a physical earthly rule. Uh, we said there are two dimensions uh, 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 or the kingdom of God, one is a spiritual aspect of spiritual dimension, the other one is the natural or the physical dimension, and we are all presently now living in the spiritual uh, uh, dimension, and so, you know, the kingdom of God is within us, it's in our hearts, it's in our life, so wherever we go, we are actually carrying uh, the, the kings uh, uh, and the kingdom of God, his reign, his domain, his rule, his uh, power, his authority. And we carry that into every situation that we go through, whether it is a, a positive situation, a negative situation, the challenges that we uh, face um, and the places that we step into. So why is it important for us to know uh, that you know uh, this this we keep repeating this again and again that you know the kingdom of God is uh, uh, spiritual uh, it's in our hearts in our lives uh, 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 because you know we need to know that you know we are, we are people who are carrying his kingdom wherever we go so when we are carriers of God's kingdom you know uh, whether it's in our home uh, when situations are not conducive or uh, in our workplace or in our church you know we have that uh, the authority we have that power uh, to speak into um uh, you know, the, uh, uh, speak into the uh, the challenge or speak into the uh, situation that is there um, or the difficulties and we can expect God's reign, his peace, his kingdom uh, domain to come and infiltrate 
um, and to just, uh, you know, uh, 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 pierce through and, you know, uh, God's peace and uh, 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 his kingdom is righteousness, joy and peace. So we can expect to see uh, his kingdom uh, uh, presence, his kingdom reign, which is righteousness, peace and joy and everything that God uh, you know, uh, 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 wants to bring into because of who he is and what he uh, does in that place. So we have to pray, okay? We have to pray that God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done in every area of our life. And also, you know, uh, uh, because we have the potential of God's kingdom to be released uh, into the places that we go to, into the situations, um, uh, because we have walked in, uh, uh, and the kingdom of God is uh, within us. We are carrying this kingdom and we are, uh, when we're carrying the kingdom of God, it's actually we can manifest uh, the kingdom. We are, the, uh, we are carrying the manifestation of the kingdom and the authority of the kingdom and the power of the kingdom into that uh, situation. Okay. So even when we look, uh, when we go to the grocery store or when we see, uh, we go to the hospital or, uh, you know, we're going to visit somebody in the hospital or we are you know, just going to an old age home or we are going to a poor house, just visiting them. Uh, we want to just do something, give them something, you know, yes, we can give them something, uh, uh, you know, physically, I mean, we can give them some gifts, but we're saying, God, uh, even as I'm going there, you know, I realize that I'm carrying your kingdom in my heart okay and uh, i want the kingdom to be manifested in and through me i want your kingdom authority and your kingdom power to be manifested in that place so we are saying god you know when i as i go there let uh, you know do science miracles and wonders let people experience your power let uh, people experience change in their lives let let people experience your goodness your faithfulness uh, let them experience your touch let them let there be a change god a shift in the whole atmosphere in the uh, in the environment and so you know uh, we need to live this way we need to live being conscious that the kingdom of god is within us and that we carry the authority uh, of the kingdom and the power of the kingdom into every situation every place that we go to uh, often you know we uh, what we do is we run away from situations. We run away from uh, places that, uh, you know, um, that is not conducive to us that we don't like. Uh, sometimes we just go to our workplaces because we have to go there or we're looking for a change. So we're saying, okay, I need to leave this place. But, you know, instead of just biting our teeth and, you know, staying in a home where there is uh, there's constant uh, uh, strife or uh, there's no peace or, uh, you know, uh, in a neighborhood where, uh, you know, there is, uh, there's no peace and harmony within uh, the neighbors who are living there. But we can make a change. We can speak, uh, you know, king, uh, uh, kingdom, uh, love, kingdom, joy, peace, righteousness, um, and say, God, bring in your kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in my home, in my life, in my home, in my neighborhood, uh, uh, in the office that I go to, the church where I go to, uh, this Bible study group which I uh, go to. Okay. So uh, we also looked at, uh, just doing a recap, you also looked at, you know, uh, at uh, there are areas of our life when, uh, just like Jeffina said, you know, uh, God expects us to be childlike. You know, where we just totally abandon ourselves, trust God, submit and surrender to him. There are also areas in our life or times when God wants us to be militant in the spirit. Okay. Uh, not militant in physically, but uh, violent physically. But he wants us to be militant in the spirit. He expects, uh, expects us to be aggressive and violent in the spirit. Um, the kingdom of God uh, suffers violence and the uh, violent take it by force okay we looked at that uh, that uh, scripture passage and unless we are violent in the spirit uh, we cannot enter the kingdom of god okay that means uh, you know uh, there are demonic forces uh, satan uh, there are uh, challenges that we face and sometimes we just give in to all of that ex uh, accept that as a norm of life and just you know, just live with it as like, uh, 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 you know, uh, with a, as as uh, a struggle or like something that is like a thorn just pricking us. Um, but we don't have to live like that. You know, we need to be militant in us, in the spirit man. Uh, we need to be aggressive and violent and take what is us, ours. You know, um, 
we uh, healing is uh, our birthright. Uh, you know, peace and joy is uh, what God has given to us. Shalom is what He has purchased for us. You know, um, uh, 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 righteousness, peace, and joy is what He purchased for us on the cross. So everything is purchased for us on the cross. But sometimes, you know, there are times when Satan tries to uh, be a hindrance, or uh, you know, or sin can be a hindrance sin in our own lives, and uh, we need to uh, discern things. And sometimes we need to be violent and aggressive. You know, we need to. Speak Speak God's word. We need to declare God's word. Um, uh, uh, keep declaring. Keep confessing. Keep standing. Keep fighting. Uh, put on the armor of God and stand and fight your battle till you take what is rightfully yours. Uh, till you take what you know God has. Uh, um, meant for you, purpose for you, what is your spiritual birthright, uh, which God has, um, uh, uh, you know, purchased for you by his precious uh, blood. So this is something that we need to understand, that we need to be childlike sometimes, just trust God that sometimes we need to be warrior-like, uh, uh, militant-like in our uh, spirit, where we need to take the kingdom by force, okay? Um, so even when people are sick, we don't... Um, give up we keep interceding we keep praying till we see a breakthrough uh you know uh even with those who uh, uh, are demonic um, uh you know have uh, uh possessed demonically you know and they manifest we don't get scared and run away from them but you know we have the kingdom power and kingdom authority greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world and so we need to be forceful and present uh, to see people delivered to see people healed to see ourselves being delivered and healed uh, in, uh, some of the areas of our um, life so as we pursue the kingdom mandate okay so the kingdom mandate is um, you know uh, is to uh, you know uh, to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven uh, there are a few things we need to pursue to fulfill this mandate and the first thing uh, we said last week is we need uh, to do everything in submission to the king okay so everything that we do we need to do it in submission to the king and we uh, just looked at that point uh, but just touch upon it uh, the uh, the last bit is we, uh, you know we must welcome the king's domain into every area of our lives and you know we need to allow him to touch our you know uh, or uh, the kingdom uh, domain to uh, touch infiltrate penetrate um, uh, you know to our everyday living so we must live and operate out of a kingdom of god perspective uh, where everything we do is an extension of the king's domain here on earth uh, which is his rule being released in and through us and um, uh, you know uh, you know and like i said uh, last week you know um, uh, it, uh, the, the kingdom of god should become like that pearl of great price uh, it should become like that treasure in the field where we are uh, willing to give up everything, you know, for the king and his kingdom uh, uh, and nothing less. So, you know, we must, uh, for us, the king and the kingdom uh, uh, must so consume our lives that we say, God, I'm willing to give up everything, uh, you know, to pursue your uh, kingdom. So, you know, God for each one of us, uh, you know, or uh, his the, the king, of the kingdom or the kingdom is that treasure in that field and that pearl of great uh, worth that we are willing to leave everything aside and just go behind uh, pursuing god uh, the king of the kingdom and also his kingdom uh, and everything that we do our life should be focused or, or centered on the king and his uh, kingdom okay uh, so all of our dreams our ambitions our plans our purposes uh, everything should be put into the king's basket you know like the saying uh, put all my eggs into one basket it's like you know we're putting everything into the kingdom basket not some in the kingdom basket some in our own basket you know because we have no other options in our life but our only option is uh you know, uh, to please the king and, uh, uh, you know, um, make his kingdom uh, uh, known into uh, or, you know, uh, bring, uh, bring about his kingdom here on earth. Okay. So the only thing that matters to us and the only thing that we live for uh, is to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in uh, heaven. 
Okay, so once we, uh, uh, you know, uh, do everything in submission to the king, uh, the next step is, you know, uh, we need to uh, unleash the kingdom influence. Uh, now, we need to remember that the kingdom of God is within us. And uh, the kingdom of God, like we studied, is like a mustard seed. You know, when we sow it, it will grow into a big tree or a big bush. Okay, and Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like that leaf, and when you put it in that lump, you know, it'll affect the entire lump. So the kingdom of God is in us. We are that mustard seed. We are that leaf, and that God has placed uh, in our home, in our office, in our neighborhood, um, in our uh, in in our town, in our city, in our nation, and you know. Uh, uh, even as this little seed can grow into a tree or a or a big bush, or even as this little leaven can, you know, actually impact or influence the entire lump and cause it to, you know, do its work just a little bit. You know, we might be very small wherever God has placed us, but it's not about our size, it's not about our age, it's not about who we are, but it's about the king uh, and it's about his power, His it's about his authority, it's about his kingdom uh, that will be unleashed in and through us, that will influence uh, uh, our uh, uh, wherever God has uh, placed us. Uh, and God wants his influence to come in and through our world and that is why he uh, he created us he created us you know to have fellowship with him but also remember when he created adam and eve he he gave them uh, you know uh, he told them subdue and have dominion okay so they were supposed to rule and uh, the earth and we also as sons and daughters of the kingdom we are heirs and co-heirs uh, of his kingdom like we read in uh, uh, romans chapter 8 Okay, we are hairs and co. We are hairs of God and co hairs with uh, with Christ Jesus. And because we are sons and daughters, we belong to this kingdom. You know, uh, uh, we have this responsibility to take. You know, or to further God's uh, kingdom, to bring about His influence. Uh, into this um, world and how do we do it we do it by kingdom thinking we do it by kingdom living and we do it by kingdom lifestyle and kingdom culture which we have all uh, you know looked at and ha have already learned about okay so you know uh, we can be that mustard seed we can be that leaven uh, we can be that salt and light because god has uh, you know, places as salt and light wherever we are um, and you know we are to bring god's influence into our world wherever we uh, god has put us you know so it should be our prayer god even as you have uh, you know placed uh, me in this wherever god has placed you and uh, even as god uh, uh, you know um, uh, we are that I am that mustard seed I am that leaven I am that um, uh, I am your salt and light and you want me to influence uh, my world uh, whichever world our small worlds that we live in you know if it's that is our prayer then we can see God using us mightily to influence uh, the people in our workplace, people in our hostel, uh, you know, in our neighborhood, in our home, among our relatives, in our office, wherever, okay, uh, God has placed us. Because that is what he wants to do in and through us. He wants us to be influencers uh, uh, of his kingdom, just unleashing his kingdom here on earth. So when we think differently, when we live differently, what are we doing? And actually bringing kingdom influence into our home, uh, into our in our relationships, uh, office, neighborhood, friends. And then we are being that mustard seed, we are being that leaf and we are being that salt and light. Uh, just by the way we are thinking, living, uh, we are bringing uh, the kingdom influence. It's not preaching. Many times we don't have to preach, we don't have to teach, but it's just the way that we live, the way that we speak, the way that we interact with people in our home, office, neighborhood, you know, uh, they will just see God in us and will just bring a kingdom uh, influence, our lifestyle, our culture that we uh, live. Okay, we already said that the kingdom is within us and we said that the kingdom is an overpowering kingdom it's a, a pervasive kingdom so if anything is going to uh, you know is going to win it is his kingdom operating in and through our life
okay because jesus has already won the victory on the cross the victory and he shares his victory with us but god needs to release this victory his influence um in and through us so we are the salt we are the light we are that mustard seed we are that uh, uh leave and that will influence uh, uh our world around so we need to say god you know uh, as i go to my office or i'm going to my i'm going to the gym now or i'm just going to go for a party birthday party where i'm going to meet all my relatives or i'm going to my neighbor's house friend's house god i want uh, to bring your kingdom thinking your kingdom lifestyle your kingdom culture your kingdom power and dominion into that place even as i step in i know that i carry all of this and god i want to see your kingdom influence so it can just be a birthday party but uh, you're going or you can be a wedding party that you are going or uh, you're going to just going to the office or the gym you're going to your neighbor's house you're just talking to him randomly but you're just in your heart you're saying god you know i want to uh, 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 bring the kingdom influence uh, in my workplace in my home in my neighborhood and even as i'm going here as i'm going there or even as you're going to the store you know there are many people in the store who come broken you know um, who come lost and you can say god uh, i want to see your kingdom come your will be done uh, with all those people who are working in the store or people i uh, people who come there to shop um, so even when you go to your, to your workplace you know when you see your boss your colleagues your friends uh, or people at the grocery store uh, you see your neighbor you know we can just quietly silently pray in our hearts saying god let your kingdom come into their heart and in, let your kingdom come into their lives uh, when you do that you're actually being a kingdom influence in that uh, place okay or you just look at a man on the street who's drunk and he's lying there or a beggar or a homeless person you're just saying quietly you're just praying uh, you know saying god let your kingdom come let your will be done uh, in that person's uh, uh, life and uh, you know that a genuine prayer god is going to answer and he will uh, you know work on your uh, behalf so we need to uh, we must also be willing to position ourselves in this world um, and jesus uh, also instructed us as we saw in uh, the, the the previous chapter he trusted us to, to do business till uh, he comes right he wants us to engage with the world uh, uh, and that's not sinful uh, with the intent of becoming profitable and so the only way we can unleash kingdom influence in the world is uh, by engaging with the world so you know we um, uh, we when we step into our mountain or mountains whether it's uh, your mountain is your sphere of influence so it can be uh, the mountain of art or entertainment that you are working in or um, that you are engaged in it can be media it can be education it can be business, uh, government, family, or religion. Whichever mountain or mountains God has, uh, you know, is taking you into. You can say, God, you know, even as you position my your uh, position here on this mountain or mountains, uh, I expect the mustard seed of the kingdom within me, the leaving of your kingdom within me, uh, the salt and light that you've called me to be, uh, to begin to permeate and, you know, penetrate into the uh, this environment or the church meeting or if you're a pastor, you know, uh, uh, and God, let your kingdom come, let your uh, will be done. So you say, God, on this mountain uh, of art and entertainment, I want your kingdom reign, your kingdom presence, your kingdom domain, your kingdom rule, uh, your kingdom power to be manifested powerfully and even as you do that you know you are uh, whether you're a teacher or whether uh, you are in the media or the business or government you can just say god this mountain i want to uh, you know i want to influence it for your kingdom i want your kingdom values your kingdom reign your kingdom presence your kingdom ethics uh, to just come and permeate and infiltrate uh, 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 through this uh, uh, this mountain and so when we when we pray like this, you know, we become more conscious of who we are, uh, the kingdom that we belong to, the lifestyle, the thinking, the thought process. And, uh, you know, uh, we do everything to please the king and we're doing things to, uh, you know, bring about his kingdom uh, on the mountain and be a sphere of influence for, uh, for God and uh, the king. Uh, of this kingdom so we need to position ourselves rightly on this mountain so that we can begin to you know uh, uh, influence that mountain or mountains or our little worlds for the kingdom of uh, 
God. So even as we begin to pray, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, uh, the next step is, you know, first, uh, first step is, uh, is submitting to the king. Uh, the second step is that we are praying, God, I want to be a kingdom influence uh, by just praying, uh, by bringing about kingdom thinking, culture, lifestyle in that place. But we're going on to say, God, I want kingdom uh, invasion. Okay, so we move to the next step of kingdom invasion. We need to ask God, God, give me some strategies. Just not enough for us to pray, uh, important for us to pray, but we need to also say, God, uh, please give me some kingdom uh, strategies or some methods to bring your kingdom uh, uh, in my sphere of influence, whether it's in your home, neighborhood, school, college, workplace, uh, wherever you have a chance of bringing in the kingdom. Say, God, give me some method that I can use. Um, so, for example, you know, we're going uh, uh, when we go to our workplace, we're not just going there to earn a salary, um, but you know, God has put you there for kingdom advancement. Okay, so you have a message to proclaim. And what is that message? That message is the kingdom of heaven is here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we have that mandate to see his kingdom come and his will be done in that place where God has um, placed you. So, you know, we begin by starting to pray. And then we also ask God to, you know, open our minds and give us, give us ideas and strategies and things that we could do. Um, you know, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to bring about the kingdom of God and to influence uh, uh, our worlds that we are living on, the mountains God has uh, placed us. So our objective is um, by kingdom thinking, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture is not just to show ourselves as good people or godly people that everyone know that, okay, you're a Christian, you're a believer, uh, uh, wherever we are, you know, uh, but our objective is to see God's kingdom come into the hearts and lives of the people that we are actually relating to on a day-to-day -day basis, whether we are relating to our neighbors or you know, people in our home who haven't accepted Christ or whether it's our maids who come to our home or, uh, you know, uh, whether uh, the same grocery store that we go in, uh, uh, you know, or uh, uh, the offices that we go, uh, the office that we go to, the gym that we go to. So we are meeting the same kind of people day in and day out. They just don't have to think of us as this good person or this godly person. Uh, you know, who they can't approach, but uh, all, you know, nice to talk to, uh, or we better not tell him or her uh, we're doing this because, you know, he's very godly or she's very godly. But our objective is for God's kingdom to come into their hearts and lives. They must experience the kingdom of God. It's not just for them to look at us and say, okay, you know, the they have the kingdom of God in them, but, you know, uh, uh, it is for uh, for them as well to experience the kingdom of uh, God. So we don't just stop at kingdom influence. We just don't stop at kingdom submission. When we submit to the king, it leads us to kingdom influence. When, uh, you know, when uh, we pray for kingdom influence to come into the place that we are, you know, we need to show them uh, kingdom uh, thinking, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture. And so we need to take it to the next step of kingdom invasion, where, you know, uh, the king of the kingdom becomes part of their lives. They have a personal relationship with the king of this uh, kingdom. And when you ask God, God will give you simple plans or strategies. Uh, for example, in your workplace, um, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can start a Bible study. Maybe you can say, I can't do it in my office space but you know uh, uh, the lunchtime I, I know many people who work in the corporates they just go to the cafeteria or after work they uh, uh, on one day of the week they just go to uh, a coffee day or some coffee place close by they just meet together uh, just share God's word and uh, in, in some of the MNCs they have a, a chapel so you know Christians have organized a, a Bible study and people join that many non-Christians come many are led to the Lord so you know, it's just simple things like this. So even when we go to the grocery store, we can say, God, um, you know, the hearts and minds of people who are working there or people who are coming there. Uh, just give me a word of wisdom or knowledge, uh, a prophecy that I can just speak into somebody's life. Uh, and so you're, you're going there and looking out for the things that you have to buy, but also you are engaging in this with your spirit. The, the spirit of God, your spirit man is in tune 
with God's spirit and saying, God, uh, who can I just give a smile to or just speak? Uh, give a word of wisdom or knowledge that can change the course of their life, that can change their whole direction of life, that can bring uh, joy, purpose, meaning, and and then to know that, you know, there is a God who cares about them. We never know, you know, somebody's even uh, planning to end their life. They're coming uh, to the grocery store or to the mall to buy some rope or something like that. And, you know, uh, we just speak into people's uh, life and can just change the whole course of their life. So uh, we need to, uh, or we're walking on the street, we see somebody, we go to uh, the restaurant, uh, you know, waiters who wait upon us, uh, you know, we can just uh, speak into their lives. We can, uh, uh, we can just, uh, uh, you know, tell them what God is conveying to us and what a difference it will make. Just telling them, you know, I'm just saying this because Jesus loves you. He cares for you. And this is, this is what he said. I'm sure they're going to listen because you've spoken something into their lives. You said something that they're going through and the challenging situations. i uh, just like to give you an example of Tommy Tenney, who was a pastor. Um, for 10 years, he was a pastor. Then he became an itinerary uh, minister and he went around the world, you know, uh, uh, speaking revival messages and unity in the body of Christ. So to all denominations, Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals and Charismatics, just went to speaking a revival and unity in the body of Christ. And, um, uh, you know, um, uh, one day God says, uh, tells uh, Tommy Tenney that I want you to do something more for me. So like Tommy was telling God, God, you just look at my itinerary, it's packed. Uh, Zelatoli, can you please uh, mute your mic, please, Zelatoli? Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, says, God, look at my schedule, it's packed for the year. I have, uh, you know, preaching uh, appointments, throughout the whole year. I'm also writing books. Uh, he's written uh, many books. Uh, but God tells um, uh, Tommy that, you know, uh, uh, no worries, Elitoli, that's fine. Uh, so God tells Tommy, you know, um, uh, no, just look at your schedule. You know, you've been spending time ministering to believers, but God says it's time now to move on to, uh, to minister to people who... Uh, I, I'm not of the faith who who do not know me, who still yet to come and be ushered into the kingdom. And God moves him uh, and uses a talent that Tommy has, uh, which uh, his uh, his uh, talent is writing. So, you know, he uh, suddenly is read to read the book of Esther. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, he writes um, uh, a, a, a novel or a storybook, One Night with the King. OK, uh, and um, this was a book that was published, uh, uh, but based on Esther's story. But, uh, you know, a common man could read it. And then one of the Hollywood uh, producers uh, read it and was so excited about it and wanted to, uh, you know, uh, make a film on it. And they called Tommy Tenney and um, and asked him to come and uh, speak to the crew and everything and just explain uh, this whole story so they can get the right perspective. Just imagine. You know, uh, Tommy Tenney would have never thought of going to Hollywood, speaking to actors and all people who work on uh, producing and releasing a movie and to directors. But here he was called to preach, which otherwise he would never have the opportunity and the, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the, a way in to do this. And so we see that, you know, God can just give us ideas. You know, he can just do things uh, and tell us to do things. And it's amazingly, he can open doors for us. And um, when we just step in and do what God is asking us, you know, um, uh, he will move on our behalf. So we need to ask God to open doors so that people can listen and know um, the God we believe in. Uh, God can give us just simple things. Um, uh, but I, I also know there's uh, one lady in our church who's... Uh, who's a Hindu convert, but she's so, you know, zealous for the Lord. She just wants to share Jesus with anyone and everyone, whoever she needs in the office, who's come, uh, speaking to or, uh, you know, goes to a restaurant or in the bus. She just And uh, once she told me that, uh, you know, somebody in her office, uh, she works in a multinational, said, we've always seen you smile. So what is it about your smile? So she just 
uh, through her smile, she just led that person to uh, Jesus. So she's saying even a simple thing like a smile, you know, or the joy of the Lord can just, you know, again, lead people to uh, to Christ. So she just looks for little opportunities where she can, you know, just uh, open that it opens a door for her and she just steps in and, uh, you know, she's uh, she just does what God wants her to uh, do so it's as simple as that god will show us some things that uh, you know how we can uh, be an influence uh, in the world that he has placed us or the mountain that he has uh, 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 placed us for okay uh, or where he has placed us um so all we need to do is you know um uh, uh we need to just um, be available uh Ask God for strategies to see the advancement of his kingdom come into the hearts and lives of uh, people. And God will give you some simple ideas. When you do it, you will see his kingdom come in practical ways in your uh, kingdom. So when you are doing and living everything in submission to the king, uh, there's the unleash and you're unleashing the kingdom influence and you're beginning to work out these strategies that God is putting in your heart to see the advancement of the kingdom of God. Remember that God's kingdom comes in power. Okay, so the kingdom of God is within us. His kingdom is a kingdom of power. Like Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, his kingdom is not in word, but in power. It's not just in word, but in power. So we have been vested with the authority of the kingdom of God. Uh, so, you know, we need to be aggressive at times to dominate the situation and say, no, we will bring in the kingdom of God in this situation, we'll enforce the kingdom of God in this place. So whether it's uh, you're handling a person with a demonic oppression, or you know all of um, their ailments is because it's caused by demonic affliction or um, some sickness or some, uh, you know, you can see some patterns happening in your house, in your family, uh, through the generations, uh, you know, you take control of that situation, you dominate that situation, and you enforce the kingdom of God into the lives of the people and in that uh, place. You know, uh, Jesus sent his disciples to introduce the kingdom of God, and when he sent them, uh, he said in Matthew chapter, we read in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, he said, and as you go preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you have received freely give okay uh, we all are comfortable uh, doing the preaching part or the teaching part or even the sharing part but we're still not comfortable healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead and casting out demons uh, but we need to know that we have freely received this kingdom authority and power and because we freely received it it's not something that is ours uh, it's God and it's the Holy Spirit that works through our lives, the Holy Spirit that manifests uh, his glory uh, through signs, miracles and wonders. So we just need to be freely be available to give, you know, not holding back and saying, I don't know if this person is really going to get healed. Uh, this person is manifesting. Uh, what if the demon catches me or if the demon doesn't leave, I'll become a laughing stock. No, we just speak the name of Jesus and we know that demons shudder and shiver the name of Jesus. They just have to leave. So we just use simple kingdom authority, the power that is given uh, to us. And we also see in read in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 9, that um, Jesus uh, not only sends out the 12 disciples, but also the 70 um, others. And he tells them the same, same thing. You know, when you go to every city, heal the sick uh, and say that the kingdom of God has come near you. So, uh, you know, just as Jesus had that kingdom authority, he gave it to his disciples, he gave it to the 70, uh, he gave it to all who believed in him, the same authority is given to us. And so we can expect the manifestation of the kingdom of God and a manifestation of the kingdom of God in and through our uh, life. Okay. Uh, a very interesting story about, uh, you know, Bethel Church, uh, Pastor Bill Johnson, uh, Bill, Pastor Bill Johnson's church. Uh, there was this uh, veteran who was a retired man of the U.S. Army, and uh, he was down with cancer in the last stages, the last few days of his life. And, um, you know, um, he did not believe in God. He had no relationship with God. Uh, and his son said, Dad, why don't you just go to Redding, California? It's just a neighboring city. 
um, and you know there's a church called Bethel Church they have something called healing rooms and uh, I've heard that many people are healed uh, so why don't you just go and pray for healing so uh, you know this man um, uh, thought I mean there's nothing to lose uh, he does not believe in God and which is my son's last request anyway I'm dying so let's just go to Redding California so he goes to Bill Johnson's church and uh, you know they call him uh, the healing rooms he it, it happens on Saturday and uh, so he went uh, and then uh, you know when his his name was called out he tells them you know you can pray for me but no one should lay your hands on me okay uh, that was his condition so they pray for him and um, because I think he seen people fall down and the power of the Holy Spirit and he didn't want to do that, didn't want to have anything to do with all of those things. So he said, you can pray for me, but no one should lay your hands on me. And so he kept his eyes open while everyone's eyes were closed and they're praying for him. And he was watching if anyone is placing their hands on him. And suddenly after they were praying, after you know a couple of minutes, he just sensed amazing peace. And that led him to just close his eyes. And when he closed his eyes, you know, there was uh, there was a a 12 year old uh, a teen who came from you know from uh, from the crowd who was just there there are many people there ministering to uh, different people at the same time he just came uh, he, i think he was just led by the spirit he he just came and he didn't know that this man had uh, you know put this condition that uh, no one should lay hands on him he just put his hand on this man and this man just boom and fell down you know and he lay on the ground for 45 minutes uh, and then when he got up, he said, who, you know, touched me? Who put their hand on me? And so they all just pointed out to that small child. And of course, he couldn't do anything to that uh, uh, to that small kid. Uh, but when he went home, he sensed he was feeling much better. So he went to the hospital and, um, you know, uh, he did all the checks and they couldn't find a trace of cancer in his body. Just imagine the last stages, he was about to die and there's not a trace of cancer in his body. And the doctor were amazed um, you know this word spread among different doctors so 14 doctors would keep calling him time in and time out you know just calling him to investigate to check to see uh, and kept on asking him and finally he got so fed up that he kind of uh, produced a small uh, booklet you know in that booklet uh, he wrote uh, who he was uh, what he had done, how he got cancer, what was the treatment, what was he going through, how he went to Redding, California, what happened there. And he just put the name of the church, he put the map there and he said, if you want to know any more, uh, in, you want to do any more investigation, you want to know anything more, uh, just go to Redding, California. This is the map, you know. <laughs> and uh, so you see that, you know, it's just a small 12 year old teen that, you know, God used. So, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, when Jesus asked us to pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as in heaven, it's, it's a kingdom of power. Uh, you know, uh, and it's all about the kingdom is all about Jesus. It's not about our reputation. It's not about our name. It's not about our fame. Uh, it's not us, the, the, uh, the size or the age, but the kingdom of God is within us. And the kingdom of God comes with power, even as we fulfill that kingdom uh, mandate. So let's not think that we can establish the kingdom in the hearts and lives of people through our own efforts. Uh, it cannot happen because it's only to the power of God. Okay, uh, so it's not about us. It's not our reputation. It's not our name, fame. It's not even about whether we are liked or accepted by people, whether people adore us. Uh, uh, but it's all about uh, Jesus. It's all about the King of the King uh, of the Kingdom. And our mandate is just, you know, let Thy kingdom come. That will be done. And we need to do build God's kingdom with that perspective, not with uh, the perspective that it's my kingdom, my ministry, it's my reputation, my church, uh, my name. But it's about Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Okay, so we are pointing out to Jesus because it is his kingdom, it is his glory that is being uh, manifested. So we need to pursue his kingdom. Um, at the end of the day, it is God's kingdom, it is his kingdom, and it is his power and the glory is also his. Okay, 
um, so Jesus left us with thy kingdom come, we need, and thy will be done, we need to pray that into our situations, into every sphere of influence that uh, God has placed us in every mountain, our little worlds, and uh, we need to see his uh, kingdom mandate being fulfilled in and through our lives, uh, uh, even as we uh, influence uh, and bring about kingdom invasion in the areas that he has placed us. Okay, the, that is the uh, last lesson of um, the kingdom of God. Anyone has any questions? I hope this, um, you know, entire book is not just a course, but has challenged you to uh, think with kingdom perspective, live kingdom lifestyle, culture, uh, how we need to be, uh, you know, permeate and, uh, you know, bring about his kingdom wherever God has uh, placed us, how we need to pray into our situation, sometimes being childlike, sometimes being militant, forceful, aggressive in our spirit and take what is um, ours and not live defeated lives because that is not what how God wants to see us live. He wants to see us live victorious life. And he also wants uh, us to be that uh, mustard seed, that leave in salt and light uh, to bring about uh, kingdom, uh, you know, his kingdom into the lives and hearts of people that we minister to on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need to advance the kingdom. Okay, any questions, any thoughts, anything anyone has to say? No? Okay, if not, uh, we will move on to uh, another uh, APC publication, Kingdom Builders. Okay. Uh, we'll be looking at this book over the next few weeks. Okay. So in this book, we're basically going to be looking at what uh, is kingdom building, uh, what does it take to be a kingdom builder, how we can... Uh, co-labor with God to build his uh, kingdom. You need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, mark this words co-laborers. We are co-laborers with God in his kingdom. Sometimes we act like bosses in God's kingdom. We act like the king of the kingdom. We act like uh, we are the owners of the kingdom. We've, and that's how Satan subtly, uh, you know, brings in uh, our downfall, but we need to understand that we are co-laborers, co-laborers with others in the body of Christ, and we are co-laborers uh, with uh, uh, God. So, you know, we are co-laborers with God to build his um, uh, kingdom, okay? Um, so we will begin our, uh, about uh, our journey of how we can be kingdom builders because God has uh, called us to be kingdom builders. So we look at the uh, quick introduction of the kingdom of God. We'll just look at a few things, reiterate a few things that we've already learned in the, uh, in the publication, uh, kingdom of God. And then we will uh, look at how we can be uh, kingdom builders, uh, starting first with ourselves, you know, with our hearts, um, you know, uh, we'll discover what it means to be a co-worker with the uh, with the king. How to develop a heart of a kingdom builder, uh, without which we cannot be true kingdom uh, builders. Okay, so if we do not have a heart to be a kingdom builder, we cannot be a kingdom builder. And also, we will look at how we need to yield to the Holy Spirit, uh, who is the one who directs us in the work of the. Uh, kingdom okay and we'll also see that kingdom building is not about building our own churches our own ministries our own empires our own name uh, uh fame but it's about building people okay kingdom building is about building people it's not about building huge ministries huge churches um uh, about um, you know uh, uh, uh making a huge name for ourselves, a uh, big reputation, but kingdom building is all about building uh, people. It's about, uh, you know, influencing their hearts and lives um, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, for the kingdom of God, uh, uh, so that you know uh, God uh, can rightly take His place of glory and honor in their lives. And how do we build people? You know, uh, we build people only by the spirit, uh, like we said, we learned. You know. Um, uh, we don't have the authority over people's life. I think we studied this in the first chapter or second chapter when we studied the kingdom of God. You know, we just um, uh, share with them, but, you know, we can't change their will. We have no authority. So we will look at uh, simple ways or keys of um, uh, doing this. And, um, uh, you know, we would um, then remind ourselves about um, uh, you know how we can collectively uh you know uh, build kingdom uh be kingdom builders even as we uh you know relate to even as we co-work with others in our community in our in our city with other churches with other ministries who do the same work how we can collectively you know build god's kingdom uh, then we remind ourselves of our kingdom responsibility towards the next generation, how we need to leave the right legacy uh, uh, so that the, the work of the kingdom uh, continues stronger with each new uh, generation. Okay, So if all of us as kingdom builders keep some of the things that, you know, or, or all of the things that we look at in this publication, you know, we will see a radical shift uh, in the in the in the spiritual dynamics of the body of Christ uh, in our city, in uh, in our town or in the region that God has uh, placed us with uh, placed us in. OK, uh, we'll stop here. We'll take a break and then we'll come back and look at the first chapter, uh, Kingdom Builders. OK, thank you, everyone.